folks. Uh, it's uh, it's Alex here for another Hobbyplex After Hours. Um, tonight I've got my monster truck and I blew out the front ring and pinion gear. Actually, I have well, both ring and pinion gears. And uh, I haven't really decided if I'm going to keep this thing or not. So um, I just decided to get the cheap stock one for now. Um, just to fix it and get it rolling if um, if I feel like keeping it um, I might uh, I might get the overdrive and underdrive to make it turn a little bit better but uh, um, yeah I'm just gonna try and repair it it's one thing I'm gonna do tonight you can see my body is uh, the trucks called top qualifier um, I have plans to make a um, a uh, fro boy truck and I wanted to get like an actual like fro like a wig or something um, but what's really funny is uh, it's actually spelled wrong my stickers so it's it should be tpqlf yer uh, and it's not it's a tpqlf yfer so it's it's top qualifier so I got like a I got like a uh, uh, an accent. It's top qualifier. So, but it was pretty cool though to make this. I had lights on the front and uh, had uh, lights underneath of it, like like um, running lights and stuff. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna be working on uh, on this, and uh, if I get done with it, and I'm still feel like staying awake, I got a couple of things I want to do to my my uh, Losi mod buggy and uh, and then take it to work with me tomorrow and drive on the track for a little bit maybe before work should be really good so yeah ah. Ah. good so Pretty sure that wheels off. Oh crap! That's right, man. Um. So who's uh? Who do we have out there? I don't see anybody saying anything yet. It's kind of weird. The uh, yeah, I think we're doing all right. Um, Gresham uh, works on the uh, baby floor at the hospital at Bergen Mercy here in Omaha, so she's her job's pretty safe. Um, people are still having babies, can't stop that from happening, so um, she's been doing all right, and then uh, the Stores open and uh, regular hours, so um, we've remained pretty busy. And uh, you know the track is closed, but uh, uh, for racing, but it's open uh, for practice. So there's still been people kind of trickling in using the track. Up to ten is what we're allowing, um, as per our state's rules. So. It's been really good. It's been really good. And uh, so far, we're uh, keeping our heads low for the most part. I hope you guys are also doing well. Drusifer25 is on. Hola. Oh. <laughs> Help if I undid the wheel. Nate's going to be there on Saturday for practice. Sweet. Maybe here in a little bit I'll show you guys uh, what I have, I think, finalized for um, the big track build whenever we get to it. Um, you know, uh, we're not really going to do a bunch of work if, um, if uh, you know, we still can't race, but... Um, I do plan on 
um, doing a lot of track maintenance um, once we're once we're able to get out there. Um, a lot of cleaning. We're gonna be going through all the pipe we have, picking out all the stuff that's that's no good, and uh, we're gonna rebuild that back wall so it looks nice. Get it all painted up and fresh looking so it doesn't look like a, a crap basically. It's gotten really beat up out there this winter, and uh, you know we got a lot of a lot of good events coming up in the next year or two. So I'm gonna try to make it uh, look sharp again. Yeah, I saw, um, Andy, I saw your guys' uh, post the other day about you guys were, like, working on stuff, just trying to find something to do. Yeah, Nate, dude, I don't know what's going on with the fuel, man. Uh, we put it in that fuel order almost two weeks ago. Um, if we don't get it, if it doesn't show up tomorrow, we're actually going to call um, direct on uh, Monday and see what the deal is. So yeah, it's bizarre. Um, I don't know if they're just like, if they're shut down down there and we didn't know it or uh, what the deal is. <laughs> Stog Hill is like making fun of Bob, the Wienermobile. You know, Bob hasn't actually raced uh, on off-road very much. He's been he's been an on-road guy uh, lately. He's been dominating the Tamiya class. So um, one thing I'm doing to the uh, to the truck here. So the monster truck, um, the J Concepts tribute wheels. If you want to be one of the cool guys, you have to uh, after you lock your wheels on. You have to uh, put these covers on over them. So, uh, so it looks cool. It does look cool. Um, but it's a pain in the butt when you got to take them off. And uh, I'll show you guys what they look like. So you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that right there, that's uh, I can't remember what they call that. It's a wheel. It's a basically a wheel cover. Um, but the tribute wheels have different offset hexes you can get. Um, I'm still using the plastic ones. You can get those in aluminum. I've never had a problem with stripping one of these yet. I am using aluminum hexes, so that's good. But in order to get anything in the axle, you have to take all this stuff off. So um, my monster truck is, uh, it has. Um, SSD, um, uh, spindles, uh, it's or hubs, it's got the uh, Vanquish, um, uh, blocks here, it's got the Vanquish rear lockouts, it's got the MIP axles because I was blowing these out left and right on a free cell all the time. And uh, I put a um, Robinson Racing uh, center diff in it, but I hadn't. The one thing I hadn't done is put the uh, uh, machined uh, ring and pinion gears in it. So uh, finally, at the end of the monster truck season, I kind of blew them out. They're just snapping all over the place. So um, I'm actually thinking about putting this thing on eBay even after all the work I've done to it. So I kind of don't want to put the expensive machined ring and pinion gear in this thing. But if I decide to keep it, then obviously I will, but I might not. I don't know. It's just kind of sitting over there. And uh, I don't have – our Monster Truck Series stuff didn't get a, get a very large turnout, and, and it was fun, no doubt about it, but um, – with all the stuff that we have planned over the next year and a half, and especially with our crawling stuff being so well, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. We'll see. Somebody just texted me. So 
So, yeah. So, I'm going to fix it. I've had to do this a couple times now already. Uh, cause I had to put the hot racing lockers in here and they were, uh, not very good. They had these two set screws that held in place and they'd always back off. So I ended up putting the incision, uh, lockers in here and they were way better. truck is pretty nice though. I was thinking about if I really got into this, getting one of those cool, um, one of those really cool chassis. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It's a lot of money. J concepts is coming out with a Claude Buster, uh, chassis. That could be interesting. I could see myself doing that. Uh, Jason's also got a really cool uh, conversion for a stampede to turn it into kind of a monster truck. So, you know, there's still some stuff I think we could try to do in this genre. See how easy that is? That's super easy. So now... And then of course I brought my uh, I brought my drill battery to work today to charge it, and then I left it at work, so I can't use my my nice drill today tonight. It's kind of lame. One thing um, I'm really looking forward to is uh, starting to get our uh, crawling night going again. Once this is, once we're all allowed to be together again, I think if they lift the restrictions past ten, we can definitely do that. Because um, I think on a Tuesday night we maybe got seven to eleven people, so it wouldn't be that difficult. Jeep dog is on. It's like I have 12 viewers right now. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of live streams out there now. Team losi has got a live stream going on. Uh, I think you've got the, uh, the On the Tone guys and their uh, podcast stuff. Uh, they do a live stream now. Um, Hopefully you guys have all seen that uh, we figured out using the OCP uh, program how to get uh, Will and I on our podcast uh, taping that we do every Monday night. That's going to be an every Monday thing now. So there'll be a Monday night um, live stream with me and Will um, doing our podcast. It'll be uh, it'll be what it sounds like um, before it's all edited out. Um, hopefully the edited version comes out tomorrow. If not, it'll be Saturday. Heck. Oh. There we go. Yeah, dude. Um, I put a fresh uh, pair of landmines on my personal crawler uh, last night, and then I took the landmines that were on my truck and put them on the store SCX102. And I've kind of been working on that, uh, the store's SCX-102 a little bit um, to try and make it run a little bit better than in stock form. And uh, um, basically we got it. So like if, uh, if we do have a crawling event or if we just have like a Tuesday night or, uh, or whatever and I got a friend or something that doesn't have a crawler, I can just be like, here, you just go drive it. And it should work really well for him. At least that's the plan. So... I'll show you guys it. It looks really cool. I actually like that Jeep body that uh, it's the, the red um, Jeep Wrangler. I thought it looked great. 
have I thought about doing a carpet off road series through the summer at all? Um, no, <laughs> dude. So, uh, the carpet off road is so much work and it's already enough work in the summertime to, to have like the summer series, um, to be what it is. Uh, the carpet off road actually takes more work to get to get racing every week than than the off road. So I haven't I haven't given a second thought about making it a wintertime only thing um, because it it requires about four to five hours of setup beforehand. And then if you don't have help, which we let we're lucky we've had after the races are over, um, but at least an hour of teardown. And we can't leave it up because um, unchaperoned practice, we tried it the first year we did it, and the carpet just got obliterated because racers get it, but people who aren't racers don't necessarily get it. And there's kind of an etiquette lapse there. And uh, stuff tends to get torn up. My jumps get broken. Um, people let their kids play on stuff, you know. So, sorry, I haven't. I really haven't. Um, if for some reason, you know, this year may be an exception, but if some reason, you know, dirt just goes downhill in the summertime, you know, it might be something we think about, but, but realistically, probably not. Um, Chuck Hall is on. He's uh, you guys see the new bomber on Axial site. Yeah, dude. So I was actually, I was hoping we would get like an early release thing of that truck so I could do a quick video on it. Um, but uh, didn't, didn't come in today. So if they're doing that, uh, it's possible it might come in tomorrow or the next day. Um, it's possibly not, might not even be doing an early release on it yet. Uh, like they did with the X10 SCX 10 three. So um, kind of keep my fingers crossed though, that it just kind of shows up and uh like an early release, you know, get your hands on it type thing. So it's cool looking. It's ready to run. I like cool looking stuff. I can't find a rag. Hang on a second here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> So Sean's still on. I got, um, I think I got my truck at 30 points exactly. So uh, I should be good whenever we can get back to whatever we like to do, you know. But I'm pretty sure I got it. That was a fun deal. Um, trying to figure out what I was going to put on there and add up and everything like that. Why is this not coming out? Oh, there we go. Yes, my truck still has red headlights. Uh, I didn't want to tear them apart. Like, I got it all shugooed in there really nice, and it's real tight, and everything works really well. I just didn't want to mess it up. Unless you tell me it's not legal, and then I'll have to go back and do the whole thing over again. It does kind of look cool with red headlights, though. Actually, uh, one of the things I was going to – so my monster truck here had these, um, like, red, um, like, ground effect lights that I put in here. I was going to figure out a way to put this on my, on my crawler. So it could be cool. Yeah, you know, uh, I I think it'd be cool to see Traxxas do a um, – what is all that? Uh, Traxxas do a um, – like a 10-scale UDR. You know, they're, they're UDR. They're big unlimited desert racers, one ten scale – or six scale. So it's this big. It would be cool to see them do what they did with the Max and just kind of kind of shrink that guy in, maybe simplify some of the um, some of the build on it and stuff. 
And I, I could see that working. You never know. Traxxas has been real quiet again for, uh, as far as new releases go for, uh, for a couple of years now. So, um, you know, last year they released the max around this time and, and but it didn't really, it wasn't like a huge thing. And I think they, the, the spring before that they had the Revo 2.0 and they had trouble keeping that in stock, but it was just kind of a redo of the, of their own car. So they haven't really come out with anything like, new new i guess since the rustler four by four so you never know it's possible um uh the one thing that i always look for was the nuremberg toy show but i think if i remember correctly um this coronavirus stuff kind of put the nicks on that this year so um because normally traxxas brings out a lot of new stuff around that time and at that show actually so, I don't know. Um, KW, uh, uh, I have not. I haven't even built it yet. Um, I actually plan on doing a, uh, like a time-lapse build of it. Um, and we've been so busy. I mean, I work six days a week right now and uh without racing so i just haven't had um the time to get it all set up so it's actually still it's it's still in a box <laughs> so i'll get to it i just I haven't had time man um i kind of like these thursday nights because i get to kind of tinker on stuff and uh, interact with everybody, but but dude, yeah, oof, just have not had a whole lot of time. Um, um, when am I going to do the track build? So that would be, I don't know. Uh, basically, when we find out. Um, when we find out when we can race again, when we can have more than 10 people or more than 50 even, um, you know, then I'll look at it and kind of set a date. And, uh, you know, if anybody out there wants to help um, here in Omaha, obviously I'll, I'll, I'll be more than happy to have that help along. But uh, I don't know yet. Probably sometime end of April, early May is what I'm hoping. So, um. Drag build? Nah. Nah. I actually just sold my slash. That would that could have been a drag car. So I'm sorry. It's just that they look cool and stuff, but going I don't know. Probably not. Sean's Sean asked drag build, and I'm like, eh. Yeah, maybe. Um, yes, this is an SMT 10 and, uh, I tore up, uh, actually both front and rear. Um, oh yeah. I don't know if you guys can see it's pretty dirty, but, uh, right, right there. There's kind of a flat spot where I got the gear. So, um, I got to put a new ring and pinion gear in it. Um, just to keep it from clicking. I'm actually thinking about selling it. Um, I got to stew on it though for a little bit because I, I did put a lot of money into the the MIP parts and the Vanquish parts and stuff. And I don't know. This is my dad. Oh, my dad. I'm supposed to talk to my dad. Hang on a second. <laughs> dad. Hey, how's it going? I'm supposed to look for a Nintendo. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. Uh, do I still have it? That is the question. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I'll have to test it. It's down here. I just found it. I'll, uh, I'll have to test it and see if it works. Okay. Nope. Nope, sorry. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I can, um, uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, well, it's not games I'm using. It's just, I, it's like a collection for me. It's, it's, you know, but I can go, I can go to gamers and I can totally find you some good ones because they're, they go really cheap now anyway. So it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. 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 at work and uh um i got home about uh 20 minutes before my live stream starts and uh my thursday night live stream and uh and yeah that's uh that's what i'm doing um uh, we're having yep we're all good uh as happy as she can be <laughs> Uh, no, I'm I'm actually in front of my uh, my monster truck, working on stuff uh, in my live stream right now. Actually. Oh well, then I better let you go. <laughs> you said that crap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. All right. But bye. bye. This is my dad. I can't like I can't not answer it when my dad calls. My dad's like three hours away, so uh, nothing nothing that important. So we're back. So, anyways, uh, apparently we're all uh, going crazy here. Yeah, I say I love you to my dad, but it's it's only uh it's weird. It's only every once in a while. Um, Patrick, we do not have any VP fuel yet. I don't know what's going on. It's been two weeks now, and uh, we still don't have any. So we'll try to figure it out. Um, I actually drove uh, – well, I'm working on this, but uh, I got the stores uh, – one of the stores demos, the Outcast 6S out. And uh, gave it a couple test runs uh, before it snowed again because it's stupid snow in here. And uh, I think I think we're my son and I um, looking at the temperature Sunday and Monday. We're gonna try to do the house jump uh, those two days, and we're gonna film it. So hopefully, um, hopefully we get that up and it's successful. We were gonna do it Easter weekend. And it was really cold and stupid and raining. And then we were going to do it Monday and it was uh, still kind of cold, but really windy and it just wasn't fun to build. So eventually, eventually one day we'll, uh, we'll get there.
Serena's on again. Hi, Serena Harl. One day we're all going to get back together and race again, right? I finally got to take my eight scale out uh, last week. That was fun. I might have mentioned that in the last one. It needs a lot. This RC8 I have needs quite a bit of setup work. Yeah, we're going to do a house jump. It's been on the back burner for a while, and um, um, I have all the wood to build the jump. Um, we're actually going to take the uh, the high jump that we used at Armageddon back in October, and we're going to chop it down a little bit. And uh, the plan is to – I live on a T, right? So we're just going to have – a really good run up and then I'm gonna have to put some plywood down because my curbs not cut so there's a bump there so we're gonna have a really good run up and the plan is to uh, to hit it and clear the house and the only thing that worries me is if I miss uh, this neighbor I'm not worried about because this house is so far away but this neighbor uh, right here behind me is uh, probably 15 feet away from from the edge of my house so if I if I hit it and I miss and I go this way, I could hit his house, which would be bad. So uh, I'm trying to build the jump and kind of I'm going to angle it kind of off to the side. So I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully I don't. Uh, hopefully I don't break my garage, uh, any windows, or my roof. That would suck because I don't know if is would RC car damage be covered by insurance? I don't think so. So. It'd be on me, I guess. Dude, that's awesome. See, I the the I was inspired by Josh Cyril's house jump from it's a viral video from a long, long, long time ago with a nitro eight scale that he used. Yeah, a large hail, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Uh, what was I doing? All right, so that bearing's there, and I think there's a stupid e clip here. Is that the the Josh Cyril video? The the nitro the nitro house jump. Cause that was a tall house. I think it was a two story house that he cleared. I think they had that car geared up like crazy too. Yeah. Sweet. When, uh, when Arma told us that they were going to send us some demos, including one of these, a couple of, they actually gave us two of these successes, one outcast at a Creighton. And, uh, the first thing I thought of was, Oh my God, uh, we should jump our my house like that'd be so cool so we're gonna make a we're gonna make a youtube video for for our channel here um i know i've been promising that for like three or four weeks now but the weather's just been crap like every time that i've got a, a in the past the past uh three weeks every day off that i have it's been raining so just kind of kind of ruins it what is going on here oh there we go okay good Dude, that'd be hard to jump the plaque. So, uh, uh, is it Bomi? Bomi on here just said jump the plex. That would be really hard. Plex is huge. Uh, we did fly a plane up onto the plex's roof once and had to go get it. That was a while ago. Okay. It's kind of annoying. There we go. So this should. Oh, that's Bob. Okay. Bob did a house jump. That's awesome. Why is this not coming off? Um, I 
I didn't know that was Bob's handle. Oh, there we go. We got it. So the 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 pinion gears. Oh, there it is, right there. The pinion gear didn't look bad, but actually looking at it now, it's got a bunch of flat spots on it. So I don't know if you guys can see that. It's pretty. Nah, it's terrible. They won't let you do it. I need better lighting. But anyway, so that's garbage. Put the new one on. Um, yeah, I'm actually thinking about, so Nate will just posted he ordered a new truggy. I, uh, um, I need a part for Emerson's truck. We're going to sell his MBX seven T and, uh, as a roller. And then we're going to turn around and get something for him. Nitro powered. I'm not sure what brand yet. We'll probably get an MBX eight, but, but, or seven or whatever MBX eight T. But uh, I don't know. He kind of said he wanted a techno, so we might just we might just go that route. That'll make a lot of people happy. So there we go. Brand new, brand new pinion gear. Yeah, I was gonna. I was actually gonna shim this. Um, whoever owned this before me, it just put gobs of grease on this thing though. It's gross. Like disgusting. Uh, I need a, Nate just asked what part I need for my truck. It is, uh, what did we break? We broke the, uh, Dude, I don't even remember. Where's it at? Oh, there it is. We broke the rear dog bone. And it's uh it's the universals. I was just gonna get them in at the plex and buy them, but um, I was gonna I was trying uh, the Pobbles first to see if they had any that I could uh, I could buy off of them. Okay, this thing is gross. There's grease everywhere. Um, another thing. What do you guys think would be uh some good? Um, I know I'm gonna get a lot of answers on this, but uh uh. One of the most, one of the better performing videos I've had in the last uh, month was my uh, how to solder uh, video that I did. The first one, the second one hasn't hit as hard, but um, I've been trying to think like, what else can I do? I was thinking about like how to change a servo on an arm of granite and sent on because um, that's one that we get a lot of at the Plex when the stock servo breaks and it can be kind of tricky. Um, if you don't know exactly what you're doing to get it, to get it, to do it quickly, at least, um, I don't know. So Nate will, uh, dude, yeah, if you got one, bring it up Saturday and I'll buy it from you. A servo overhaul, like a like a servo rebuild, you can do that. You can use like a Traxxas one; they're real cheap. Because most people don't buy servos, or I mean servo gears. They just chuck the servo and start over. Yeah, I think that'd be really good. That's a good one. I could do that.
Endpoints, that's a good one too. Um, oh, we got a guy from the UK. That's awesome. Uh, how are you guys holding up over there? God, this thing is... I, one thing I was thinking what was um, uh, when I uh, set up my servo winch on my crawler with the with a sandwall radio, um, the Japanese did not have uh, winches in mind when they when they had their their uh, MT44 radio. So I kind of had to learn <laughs> all the lingo to get it to set up right. I was thinking about doing that. I think that'd be a good one. Struggling with not getting out to make videos. Yeah. So um, here in the States, it's kind of different from state to state. So, um, you know, we're from, I'm from Nebraska and there's not too many restrictions here in Nebraska. You can't congregate. Uh, you can't have more than like 10 people together. Um, our mayor just shut down all the parks about a week ago. So we can't go fishing um, we can't even like take a walk in a lot of these parks. Um, our walking trails are open, but that's it. But you can't actually like veer off and go to a park. So it's kind of, kind of sucks. Um, but uh, most of the stores, um, a lot of small businesses like, like our store are still open. And, uh, so it's not as, we're not as locked down as some other places are in the country, which is fine. We have a lot smaller population as well. So, um, you know, if we were, if we were in a, a much larger city and packed together a lot more like, like New York or Chicago, I think there'd be a lot more restrictions where we live. Dude, that's gotta suck. <laughs> like, so I was expecting uh, three weeks ago when this went down, I was actually expecting them to do like a citywide shutdown, um, like a lot of other places have here in the United States. And um, so I went out to the grocery store and made sure to stock up on like canned good foods and all that. And and then I started fi trying to figure out like how many, how much of the day was I going to spend playing Red Dead Redemption, and uh, you know. Um, you know, was I going to just sleep all day? Um, how would I stay busy? You know, am I going to have to just go through my cars over and over again? <clears throat> but alas, we've been open, really. So um, we just can't race, which, you know, uh, for me personally, um, I raced two times a week, every week since 2011. So, and the last time that I actually raced in a race, an RC car race, was like March 7th. So, this is the longest I've ever gone without actually racing my RC car in, in like nine years. It's insane. It's crazy. Bob's like, I wonder how many people are going to the AA after this. Yeah. I don't know. Um, oh, did I just do that? <laughs> Stupid. God, dumb. See, I, it's hard for me to, to, to chat and, uh, and work at the same time. I totally forgot to put the, put the gear in the diff gear. Dumb. You know, the uh, the whole toilet paper thing was so bizarre. Like, 
I didn't believe it. And then when I went to Walmart like three weeks ago and they were out of toilet paper and paper towels and all this stuff, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. They were out of, uh, when I went, they were out of ramen noodles. They were out of soups. Uh, they had no meat at all, like beef. They had nothing, no steaks, no hamburger, no nothing. But then I went to uh, Hy-Vee up the street and they actually had stuff except for toilet paper. They didn't have any of that. So I just, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm going to become a prepper once this is all over. And uh, I'm actually going to like, like stock up on stuff and keep it hidden here in the house. I think I'm going to do that for real. Uh, there should be an O-ring back here, I think, and there's not. Yeah, so... Uh, so the Hobbyplex has an indoor crawling course and an outdoor crawling course, and it's like five minutes away from my house. And a lot of people here in Omaha um, go to the Plex to use it, which is really cool. But I actually got permission to put to build a crawler course in my backyard. But again, it's one of those things. The same reason why I haven't been able to uh, um, to build my 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 twenty two X four is because I'm in a time because I've been going to work. I have to work like six days a week and it's like all day. So, um, so I'm, uh, kind of bummed out that, um, in a way I was like sad that we didn't get shut down because I was really planning on, on building a crawler course in my backyard. Um, people spending funny money with y'all. Uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, we, we've actually been really busy and, uh, luckily, you know, um, people are really adhering to the, to the, uh, um, six foot rule for the most part. I kind of, today was the first day I actually had to kind of mention just to a couple people to kind of, you know, um, stand on the X's that we have. Cause they were just. There was like this big group and they were all around one another. And I'm just like, guys, come on, you know, uh, we know what we're supposed to do here. Let's just make sure we keep doing it. But other than that, um, we've been really busy and, and it really hasn't been, it's just been steady, just constantly steady. I think one of the things is cause we're, we're open, you know, and people are looking for stuff to do and we have a lot of stuff that people can, can get to, uh, to stay busy, um, you know, while they're trying to stay home as much as possible besides coming to hobby town. I'm glad I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining at all about it. It's just crazy how busy we've been. We sold, uh, so far, um, we finally got STX 10 threes in and we've sold, we got in eight of them where we're down to two on the last like three days and I was planning on getting one, but then I don't know when I'd have time to build that either. If I can't build my, my, uh, my low C four wheel drive, when would I have time to build a pretty complicated crawler? Yeah, I agree. I think um, I think uh, I think what this has done is kind of allowed us to kind of reevaluate what what can make us all happy. Like, it's cool to have race cars, and I do miss going to the track. But at the same time, um, you know. I, I brought home that outcast after thinking about it for almost a year. I'm like, I'm going to bring that outcast success home and, and, and give it a try and, and see, see if we can have some fun and make it work. And I'm just down the street 
you know, going up and down and, and, and slamming into stuff and doing wheelies all over the place and all that. And kind of almost like, like rediscovering what fun is with RC cars, you know, I think, I think there's probably a lot of that going on. And then one of the cool things about the, the slower side of the hobby, like crawling and stuff is you don't have to have uh, a fully prepped track. You can, you can, uh, you can just build something at home and it doesn't even need to be that extravagant. You can just have, you know, if you got a little bit of rock or some, some retaining wall or something like that, you can use it, you know, or go get some branches and make a, make a, um, a bridge or something, you know? Mini Z's. So uh, I put one of those Kyosho Toyota uh, Mini Z crawlers on back order about two weeks ago. So hopefully we get them soon. I think that'd be cool. And yeah, so uh, KW dude, uh, I still have my 350 QX3. Came out in like 1993. And, uh, um, um, we took that out for the first time in probably, you know, a year and a half and, uh, we used my son's GoPro and it was a blast. I, I forgot how fun and easy that is. And the last time that I took it up with the GoPro, I had a GoPro hero three and my son's got a GoPro hero eight and holy crap, like the nighttime vision of the eight compared to what I used to have is like night and day. It took awesome night video. So uh, he and I are planning on doing that again here pretty soon. I think it'd be really good. Uh, okay, so I think this goes back in here. Get my fingers all greasy because it's gross. Because there's buttloads of grease in this thing. Like so. I don't, you know what? I'm actually going to put a rag in there and try to wipe away all that nasty grease. I don't, I don't like all that in there. It's like it just attracts dirt. A little bit of grease is fine, but not a lot of grease. Um, so good, a good drone to get without, um, without breaking the bank. So the, the, the problem you're going to run into now is that the drone market at, at about 2014 or 15 went just blew. It just, it just tanked big time. And it's because of the stupid uh, FAA regulations. They, they did all this stuff. So um, it's really hard to get a drone that, that, that isn't a lot of money uh, for something good. So the closest thing that I could say is probably a Phantom three, if you can still find them out there, because I think, I think the last time I looked, they were like $400. Um, and it has all the good stuff like uh, GPS and return to home and, and uh, stability functions and all that. Otherwise there's, there's not a whole lot of good in between stuff. The tracks is um, the tracks is how do you pronounce it? Is it a tone? Aiton, that was another one um, that was not too bad, and it had a, I believe it had a two uh, a, a gimbal with it, and I think they were like three fifty nine, ready to fly, um, and you supply your own camera like a GoPro. If you can still find those, I think um, um, for some reason I think Trax has discontinued them because we haven't had one in a while, um, and like my QX three that I have at, at in two thousand thirteen. It was uh, it was four hundred bucks. It was three ninety nine, and seven years later, it flies great. So, but other than that, your DJI stuff um, is kind of the kind of where it's at. So, okay, that and ugh. Like I'm down for a little bit of grease, but 
you should, I, I hate it when there's just tons of it in there. And a lot of times with these ready to run cars, when they get built, they just pack it full of this nasty grease. And it just, in my opinion, it just attracts dirt. It doesn't really do anything good. All right. So put that back in there. And uh, like that. And we'll get this back in here. Um, yeah. Well, no, I it, I stripped it all out, but I still have the motor. Um, so I stripped it all down with the intention of uh, of selling the components I had in it because right now um, with Castle Creation not having a whole lot of motors in stock. Um, I kind of, uh, I kind of, um, thought that the motor that I have in the, had in this would go for, you know, a little bit. So I still have it. I just, I don't have it in the, in the truck anymore. Do you guys get a kick out of me struggling forgetting stuff when I'm uh, when I'm pretending to know what I'm talking about when I'm on here? <laughs> Damn it. So stupid. Forgot the bearing. Okay. One more time. I was like, why is this moving around so much? Uh, what's a good eight scale buggy servo? Uh, let's see. There's the, uh, the ProTech, um, 155 in both the S and the T. So the T would be for steering and S for speed. If you're doing nitro for electric, um, that'd be a good one. Um, the 170 T if you're going to, if you, if you want to spend the money. Um, and then uh, one that's not as expensive, I believe it's the Savix. Hang on. I got one. have one here somewhere. I can't remember the number. Yeah, here you go. Um, the Savix uh, 2274. Uh, so um, uh, I think there's also a 2273. Uh, these aren't as expensive. Um, if you're, uh, if you're an eight scale, uh, kind of sewer, uh, MK servos are doing really, are like really popular for those. They've got these like mass, like these big teeth and everything too. They're the gears are like, I guess stronger, like the pitch is different, but, uh, that's what I would do. The, the 155 T or the 170 T would be would be what I'm going to go with next. Um, these are, if you're into RC at all, this is like the box to have. So um, it's got the, it's got the, the bottom for all your parts or, or uh, like I got tools and then it's got your, uh, it's got your top. See like that. And uh, Menards, nine bucks. It's a Plano box. I don't know what it's called, but Menards is the only place that I know that has them. Um, Bob asked if we got them in stock. We've got 
the 155 T and we've got the Savic servos. Uh, we don't have the 170 T cause I think they're, I think they're kind of a lot. Let me double check. Let me just go to hobby town here real fast. See so guys, you can go to, to hobbytown.com to find stuff and then you can order it from us. And they have a brushless version of these too. Let's see. Um, yeah, the 170T is, is $159.99. So I haven't ordered one yet. Um, but that's what I was thinking about getting Emerson for his Truggy. Uh, but the 155T is $139.99. And then the Savix one that we have, I believe, is only $109.99. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So now that I have this in the right way, I'll try again here. Dumb, just being so dumb. There we go. And this goes back in there. So now the ring gear is good. And then What I've done in the past is put this in the wrong way. And then when I spin my wheels, they go the wrong way. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully I put this in the right way. I think, I think that's how it goes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. We got it. Dude, the triple five is a great servo. Um, we carry that at the Plex, uh, um, but that's one of the good reef servos for sure. Okay, put this back in here. Yeah, I think for the crawling community, I think the reefs servos kind of have that market uh, kind of locked down. And that's that's one reason why the Hobbyplex carries all that stuff, because um, it's uh, sought after. What is going on here? Why is it not going in? There we go. Okay. And, uh, you know, in my, um, um, on my uh, uh, Element Enduro, I haven't really had any problems with the, the actual drive line. So like this thing, my SMT, when, uh, when I was running it uh, at first in the, our Monster Truck races, I was going through plastic axial drive shafts like every run they'd break. And uh, so I finally broke down and bought the MIPs, and I, I I was hoping that that wouldn't be the case in my in my enduro, and hasn't. They've been really good, but they do have that metal insert in there. I was thinking about getting the brass uh, the brass ones though from uh, Samix. Put a little bit more weight down there. Okay. 
There we go. And there's that. And put that back on. Clayton's on. Hey, Clayton, did you get your butt kicked? How'd you do today? Clayton went to a fighting, uh, uh, like a uh, fighting gym today. I haven't fixed my 22 yet. No, I'm more sure to know what Clayton's doing. How is he, how's he feeling? No response yet. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Clay, Cam was kind of worried. He, he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to take you, dude. I thought for sure he'd uh, he'd pound away at you, so I'll, I'll talk to him tomorrow for sure. That's exciting. Okay, so we're basically fixed. Now we just got to put the stuff back on it here. And... Uh, Yeah, I wish I could show you guys my I got my Fight Club uh, poster there. That's uh that's one of my like favorite movies. Yeah, this one this way. Uh Cameron is a rip dude. You were right. You know, before I die, I would I would like to be ripped. Like just 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 man shaped strength wise. Um but I've had that goal now for about twenty five years and uh haven't come close to being ripped yet, so probably not gonna happen. Not saying it couldn't happen, but there'd have to be some drastic lifestyle changes for that to happen. The problem is I like cheeseburgers and kickstarts way too much. Especially cheeseburgers. Oh crap. Yeah, the closest I've come is um, uh, right after my mom died in 2009. I think from 2010 to 2011, I, uh, I paid to have a personal trainer three days a week um, with some of the money she left me. And um, I dropped about 25 pounds and started to have that like curve back look like when you look in the mirror naked and you're like you're like this and you're like you're like oh right but uh then um then i started thinking about how much money i was spending on that and my and my, uh, my gym membership and all that other stuff and kind of got away from it ha <laughs>
Dude, they got rid of my favorite. Well, I don't know if they got rid of it, but I can't, I cannot find uh, Henry's hard soda in orange flavor anywhere now. So I don't know if they just stopped making it or what, but they got that like Henry's hard spritzer or whatever. Ugh. No, thank you. We had an entire um, ice cream cake for my wife's birthday on Sunday. Between the three of us, Emerson, me, and, and her, and Emerson make, ate the most of it. So, I don't know. Okay. So, we should be back in business. And... There we go. Change this out. The one thing about, about me, I, I do like riding my mountain bike a lot. So when, um, when the weather finally turns consistently nice, I do ride a lot and I do, I do shed some weight basically from spring through about fall, not to the point where I'm going to be ripped like Cameron, but, but I mean, I do, I do go out and try to be active at least. So, uh, uh, I woke up, I woke up today and I'm like, oh my God, it's not going to snow. And, uh, we got snow here in Nebraska. Um, I, th I bet you we got four to five inches actually once it's all done. And, uh, it started snowing about three o'clock or so, I think about 3 PM. And, uh, when it became clear that it was going to accumulate on all the ground and everything, I just wanted to punch a baby. That's like the worst thing ever snow on April 16th. I just, I just can't stand it. It's not supposed to do that. But hopefully it'll all be gone in a couple days. I hope because the problem is the mountain bike trails don't they'll they won't it'll take a few more days to dry out after all this so if it's nice you know Sunday it doesn't mean that that I can go out on the on the dirt trails and bike because the the dirt will be muddy and you get yelled at for that so I don't want to do that Well, it's definitely better because I was holding, um, I could hold the rear wheels and actually spin the front. And now, now it's nice and tight. So, but I think the rears are still bad. Maybe. Maybe not. That might just do it. It might be good. Three hours away of weights to maintain it. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Nor do I have time to do that. My three hours a day would, would go to maintaining the dirt track at the Plex. So that ain't happening. All right, well, I'm going to chuck that because that's gross. And uh, I got to put these back on. And then this baby is done. I can feel a little bit better about things now. Uh, do I race touring car at all? Uh, yeah, I have an x-ray, uh, like a 2015, 16 x-ray. And as a matter of fact, uh, Tim told me that if I would have raced last Wednesday that we raced, um, in the series that I would have won, um, USGT. And, uh, I didn't race because we were too damn busy upstairs in the store. And I didn't feel like staying late that night, so I skipped it. But if he would have told me that beforehand, I would have just went down there and, and ran. 
Oh, well. Uh, yeah, my, uh, my touring car is like a good distraction because um, I bought it used and I bought it really well set up and I, I don't ever touch it or do anything to it except maybe like brush off the, the carpet every once in a while and it just works good. So it's a nice distraction from all the off-road stuff that I do. But I, I like racing USGT because the bodies are cool looking. I have no interest in doing an actual um, like touring car type body again. I used to, but I don't know. Um, I should have got an x-ray a long time ago, though. I can tell you that much. Car's dialed. Even the old one that I have is really good. Okay, one more. Yeah, it kind of depends on what you want to, if you're going to race it, uh, what and when you're going to race. So, um, you know, at the Plex, you got the TT02 class um, that uh, that Bob's really good at. And actually, Cole just bought one. He just got a TT02. He's on here. That's a fun class at the Plex just because it, it's there's a lot of them and uh, the cars are essentially the same, you know. And uh, I was going to race our Tamiya Regional with uh, TA07 um, in GT2 is what is another class that they called it, it was a uh, basically USGT it was 21.5. And uh, then we had to cancel, well, not cancel, we had to postpone that race. So, so I still have it. Um, I got a body for it. Kenny just painted me a body. And uh, then we had to kind of put everything on hold. So it's kind of lame. Got to get these stupid wheel covers on. Uh, you know, yeah, okay. So, um, uh, there you go. Bob's on. So, uh, spec and GT uh, are the biggest classes we have. So, spec is um, any Tamaya like uh, TTO two. Um, I think you can even race the TTO one if you wanted to. You probably. I mean, if you wanted to, I think he'd allow that in there. And uh, on the Wednesday night rules and the Sunday rules, you can use either the uh, this kit brushed motor or I believe it's a 21.5. So the 21.5 or 25.5, Bob, I don't remember. Monster truck is done. But um, this would be the uh, okay, yeah, there you go. So, uh so the spec classes, TTO2, um, brush motor, and then they have at the regional rate, at the Tamiya race, they'd have the, the pro class, which is a 21.5 brushless. And then um, this, this is a TA07, and this would race in our um, uh, USGT class on a weekly basis uh, with a 21.5 um, motor that um, everybody runs the same motor. It's the Gravity RC motor. 
And then for the Tamiya race, it's any 21.5 um, with no, no timing allowed in the speed controller or anything like that. So, um, uh, GT just uses, um, like any body, any body that's not legal on the roar list. So, uh, so roar racing, right. Has, um, a approved body list for touring car, right? Well, uh, basically with USGT, Anybody that's 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 on that list is illegal for USGT. So it's got to be a realistic looking body. So you're going to see mostly um, like Exotech uh, makes really cool bodies. Uh, Baby Design makes really cool bodies. Protoform uh, makes really cool bodies. They just come out with a new uh, uh, mid motor vet that uh, that I plan on getting because it looks really cool. Um, but like this one, uh, this is your NSX uh that Tamiya makes and the reason why all the guys like this in in the GT class at the Tamiya race is because it's real lightweight and again it it it's a real looking I mean it's based after a real car so uh that's the other thing the USGT bodies were supposed to be based after a real looking car but basically it just means that um it can't look like a taxi cab touring car sort of thing and there are some bodies that aren't legal in USGT some of the more like outrageous ones. And it, again, it's kind of cause they're like, they were supposed to mimic a real, a, like a, a scale. They're supposed to be scale. They're supposed to look like an actual car of some sort. So there you go. But uh, this is actually Matt Robinson's car and he was gonna let me borrow it for the Tamiya race. And then we had to postpone the Tamiya race. So this has just been sitting over here uh, the whole time. So one day I'll get to it. Maybe that'll be another Thursday night uh, thing. I wanted to go through it and try to make it lighter and and uh, give it a little flex. I don't know. Let's see. And I need to cut out the body and mount it and put uh, my hobby plex stickers all over this thing and make it look really cool. So Kenny did a good job. I'm sure Bob could do a good job too. It's just Kenny knows my paint scheme so well. I just, I'm always like, just paint it. So. So I uh, broke my my Losi car, and uh, I think I'm going to put um, Team Associated ball studs and ball cups on the car because I don't give a crap. I'm not sponsored by anybody, so I can do whatever I want now. And uh, that's something I did on my old uh, 4.0 Losi when I had it about three years ago. And I never had a ball cup come off or break ever. So um, I think I've got enough um, in my boxes that I can do that. But that might wait till tomorrow. So, uh, Bob Hamilton, Bob's bodies on Facebook, he paints and, uh, he's really busy with painting. It looks like, and, uh, um, around here, that's kind of Kenny, Kenny kind of, he can kind of paint, but he's, um, he's kind of scaled back his painting operation. So, um, he still, he still paints for, uh, for people. If you ask him nicely, he's out on Wednesdays. Um, if he's not super busy, but, uh, but Bob's the, Bob seems to be the go-to guy around here lately. So that's a good one. I'll show you guys something before I leave. We got about five minutes.
So I have my, uh, this is the store's SCX-102 that we got as a demo uh, to, to, you know, show people and stuff. And I've, I've let some people go out to the rocks with this thing and suffered the consequences. It's had two broken servos, but um, I just put, I just put uh, my used landmines on here and uh, uh, I got the brass uh, patties on the front and um, we got a, a new, a new steering servo and I put a metal bumper on this thing last night and uh, I think, um, I think I want to put a roof rack on it right here and then put a, a, a light bar right here and be that guy and then put stuff in the roof rack. So when, um, when, uh, uh, when we have our comps, if somebody wants to use it, you know, they'll get a decent amount of scale points and stuff too. So I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm also thinking about, um, I'm thinking about taking, um, the shocks that are on my element right now and putting them on this and then buying the factory team element shocks and putting them on my element. So my, my, uh, my personal element crawler will be, will be like, like super awesome. And then this would be getting close to super awesome. And then I want to put overdrive and underdrive on it too. And then I think this thing's going to work out, actually work pretty good. So, but yeah, I've been working on this thing a little bit, trying to get it to do a little bit better. We'll see. Yeah, look at that. We just drummed up some business for Bob. Yay. I need a shower. So, um, uh, You guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off and uh, go to bed, and uh, I'm gonna try to get up to Plex. Uh, I work at noon, so I'm gonna try to get up there a little early tomorrow and uh, drive my race car for a little bit, and then um, prepare for the day. So it's fun hanging out with uh, with all my buddies on here, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get back to what we really enjoy doing soon. It's kind of a bummer that we can't race. Uh, we can't even do like normal crawling get togethers or anything like that. But, uh, I think we'll get there soon. So, um, yeah, see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you made it fun and, uh, we'll see you. Uh, remember the podcast is live on Saturday on uh, Mondays now, um, right around six 30 ish, somewhere around there. So tune in for that. Uh, if not, I don't see it at the store sooner.